Hello and welcome everyone. This is another sound design tutorial on Sky River Sound. My name is James Thatcher and today I'm going to be going over how I make ghost sounds using Waves Ovox, which is a really cool vocoder-like plugin that they've just come out with. Once again, I'm using the game Shale for inspiration for the sounds. Shale is still in early access on Steam, although they did just release a really cool new update. And I've even heard from the developers that they'd like to include my Banshee sounds in a future patch. So what I'm going to do this time is I'll show you the end ghost sound, and then I'll show you how it is that I put it together. So let's hear the ghost. All right, now how did I get to that sound? Well, I started out by recording myself moaning and grunting as ghost-like as I could. I'm not a voice actor, and this is not synced to the video. This is just the raw recordings of me trying to sound like a ghost. <laughs> I think that's enough of that. Losing viewers by the second playing that. So, what did I do with those? Well, I sent them through a really cool plugin called Waves Ovox. I'll pull it up here so that you can see it. Okay, so here's Ovox, and you can expand it out and get more control over the formants. And this is where the real magic happens. As you control the formants, the uh, bandwidth or the cue of their filters, as well as the frequency that it focused at. I'm setting this about to the settings that I used here. And then I think I turned up the speed quite a bit as well. And what I did was I changed it from using the internal synth or carrier to using a side chain that I built myself. So I've got it printed here. I'm going to show you how I built it. Let's set up a new track. And I built it using Modular from Softube. And there we have our load screen for Modular, where we can add modules into our project. So what I did to make this sound, it was actually a fairly simple sound. I used two random voltage or noise generators. I fed them into this dual crossfade module. And from there went into clouds. And clouds I further modulated using the simple sine oscillator as an LFO. So I turned its frequency range down to where it was in the LFO range instead of the oscillator range. Now how did I hook this up? I started out by taking the white noise from each of these and putting them into the left of the crossfader. Now I'm going to leave these panned center because I'm not actually trying to pan this left to right. What I'm doing is I'm trying to blend between the white and the colored noise sections so that we end up with a stereo noise. I pulled the blue noise down to about two, red noise up to about eight on each of these, and then sent the random output, or ra yeah, the random outputs, which is a randomly generated control voltage, into the control voltage in for the dual crossfade so that it would randomly blend between the left and right or between the uh, white and colored noise for each of these channels. Let's hear what it sounds like just with the noise generators. So 
Sounds more like crashing waves than a ghost, but just stay with me here. We'll get there. I sent it then into clouds, left and right inputs. And if I leave it in the defaults, you're not going to hear a whole lot. I'm going to up the input gain to where it's occasionally clipping. And let's hear what it does just with the default size. It's not going to sound like much because the grain size is still too small. So right now you're thinking, okay, genius, you made the sound louder. How is this getting to a ghost? Well, the reason it was just louder is because the way a granular synthesizer works is it chops up the incoming audio into thousands of tiny little pieces and then plays them back together. When you have the settings in the default settings like this, the pieces are so small or the grains are so small that it essentially sounds the same as whatever was coming in. So I need to up the size of the grains. And I played with the position a little bit. And then I also took the pitch down. So now what we get is this. We're on the path now to sounding more otherworldly and sinister. So what I did from here, I, I did play with the texture knob a little. Um, and I even modulated it using the sine oscillator as an LFO. Texture. What I then did and where the real magic came in was when I used this blend knob. Now the blend knob on clouds changes what it does based on what you've clicked this button to do. So right now it's in reverb mode. I can tell that by looking down here in the bottom left corner. So now that I know it's in reverb mode, I know, yes, I want reverb. If the question is reverb, when is the answer ever no? All right, I'm gonna click that button again because I, though I don't want to do dry, wet or crossfade, I want to leave those at default. I do want to add more feedback, quite a bit more feedback. Now let's hear it. Now we sound like we're in the underworld. I told you to stay with me. All right, let's pull that out so it doesn't use up CPU as we're playing it back. What I then did was I took that noise, printed it onto this track, and then sent this track to where it no longer outputs to the master fader, but instead, outputs to the side chains of each of these tracks of me grunting. I put Waves OVOX on using the settings I showed you earlier and ended up with this. So there's one more layer that I added to it. You can't really see the waveform here. But what I did was I took a recording of me taking an old CPAP machine hose and swinging it around in the air so that it made some whooshing sounds. Put the microphone on the end that I was holding that was holding still, and then it caught the air as it was being forced down the tube by swinging around. What I did with that was pulled up the gain, and then I, I'll show you the, just the effects chain really quickly here. Okay, so I took Waves R channel. I added some compression on here. No, not R Vox mode, R comp. 
added some compression about like that. Use the auto release curve. Uh, just be, just to tame the peaks a little bit and keep the sound a little more consistent. Uh, I did use the EQ for some high pass filtering, and I believe I emphasized some of the presence as well. And what I also did, the main thing that I was using this for was because this gives me access to the side chain for the gate module. So I switched the gate to external side chain, pulled the frequency of the side chain down a bit, and then I used the bus up here where I have all of my vocalizations as the side chain to tell the gate when to open so that you would only hear that swirling swooshing sound when the ghost was crying. So after that, what I added in was I used sound shifter Left it in its default settings, just took it down by an octave. And from there, I went to Valhalla and used Vintage Verb. It's a gorgeous reverb. Uh, I believe, let's see. I used the Chaotic Neutral Vocal Chamber and I changed the color to 1970s to make it a little darker and less hi fi. And other than that, I left it the same because Valhalla is one of the few companies out there that makes useful presets. And so I really didn't need to change anything. So with those all, I ended up with this printed sound that I've got right here. Let's solo this and turn it up so that you can hear it. There you have it. And once again, all together, we have it like this. And you know what? Let's watch the second video just for some variety. And there you have it. That's how you can use Waves OVOX plugin as a really nice fine tuned vocoder to make some creepy ghost sounds. If you'd like more sound design tutorials, you're interested in learning how to use some different kinds of synths, or if you're interested in working in game audio and you have some questions, be sure to check out Akash Takar's page. He's a really good guy and does great tutorials. I'm putting a link up here so that you can follow it. Go subscribe now. You can thank me later. Thank you so much for watching. Tune in next week. I'll show you how to make the teleporting sounds as the ghost teleports from one side of the player to the next.